Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you watching. Give me that like and subscribe if you enjoy this video at the end there. And today we're gonna to be going over solar photography, which is just the real basics of it, nothing too crazy. And we have our first sponsor today for the videos that I do. And it is me, which is, you know, not much effort I guess, but I'm selling t-shirts with the logo on it and stuff. I have a video review for it if you are interested. Uh, and the link's down below in the description from Bonfire. So. Let's get right into it. So first things first is uh, we're gonna be using an 18 stop ND IR filter for this. It is extremely dark, it's about $200, $300. I'll put a link down below in the description for this as well. Now, another thing you're gonna want is a filter wrench because the first time I did solar photography with this Sigma 150 to 600 and this filter, I was taking pictures of the 2017 Great American Eclipse and from staring at the sun for so long it actually heated up the front element and the uh, filter and it actually caused it to expand on the threads and i wasn't able to get it off for probably three or four days i tried everything i was i was real desperate and stupid i tried wd-40 on the thread uh, on the threads it didn't do anything i tried putting it in the freezer as people said that didn't do anything i tried wrapping rubber bands around the filter threads that didn't help me at all I tried using those uh, the rubber grippies that you use to get lids off of uh, jars and stuff. That didn't do anything. So then I learned about filters and filter wrenches. It has little grips on the inside here to grip the filter and twist right off. It saved my bacon. So I tell everybody to get one, especially if you're doing solar, because it will warm up, expand, and you won't be able to get it off your front element. So this is an 18 stop infrared. 95 millimeter filter from Format High Tech. It's a Firecrest. I've had it for a couple of years, and this is the uh, the actual filter. As you can see, it's extremely dark. You, you you can't see through it, no matter what. Now, if you buy this and you're doing solar photography, looking at the sunspots and stuff, it's real cool. I find it really really fascinating and whatnot. But other uses for this is you can shoot long exposure landscapes with it, which is really cool. Like uh, just to get one exposure with this thick of an ND filter, it's usually like a four to six minute single exposure around F5, ISO 100, give or take around there, depending on what kind of day it is on your, uh, your weather. But back to solar. So the first thing you wanna do, this thing does collect dust and fingerprints and it's, it gets pretty gross. So we're going to put the filter on the tripod. And another thing to think about when you're doing solar, uh, the sun is 93 million miles away. Everyone kind of knows that, I guess. It's a long ways. Make sure you have a sturdy tripod for this because any wiggle on your end is going to throw the lens off millions of miles. So you're using a little cheapy tripod, like a $60 Manfrotto sport action or action sport whatever they call it nowadays probably not the best decision this benro the legs themselves was under two hundred dollars and you can get like a thirty dollar ball head for on there i have a couple recommendations in the description i got some reviews on the tripod legs we'll be using today and a ball head i would suggest but right now i'm using my 504 xp Frodo fluid head it's kind of overkill for solar but my other tripod's holding the camera that I'm talking to, so it's good enough for now. Now that we got this all cleaned up, ready to go on, take your hood off. I'm just gonna throw it out on the ground for now. We really don't need the hood for solar photography, since uh, literally this is gonna block out any light you have coming in at weird angles, because it's so freaking dark. And just to give an example real quick, if you can even see it, how dark this is, flashlight on the phone, literally can barely even see that. Like I, I'm sitting right here looking at it. I can't even see the flashlight through that. So another thing to think about is there's a couple different websites that tell you the current solar activity. Just look up space weather for the sun, really. There's several different websites. I'll put my personal preference in the description. So whenever you go to screw this on, screw it on very lightly. Don't crank it on. You don't have to worry about it. 
torquing it on there like you're keeping a tire from falling off a vehicle going down the road. Just let the, f the threads fall into place. And just finger tight. Don't do any more than that. So, say you're at the end of the day and you want to get this off, you got to use your filter wrench, wrap it around there, like that, onto the filter, and then just squeeze lightly with your fingers, and then just twist off. It puts even pressure around the whole circumference of the filter, and you don't get tight spots where you're bending it, causing more friction than you need. So now that we got it on there, as you can see, you can still put the hood on if you really wanted to. This really comes down to personal preference. I usually don't, but just to show you that it does fit on there. And a couple other little tidbits and tips. Uh, you can shoot on slightly overcast days because uh, whenever you're doing the solar photography in the sun, uh, you will literally just see right through the clouds and you'll see the sun. It doesn't really degrade a whole lot. And the sun is very white when you look at it through here. And another thing is if you're using a DSLR, uh, use the back screen if you can. And you can also use a USB and connect your camera to a laptop so you can view the video live view of your DSLR on the laptop. The reason why I say this is you really even with an infrared filter and a real heavy stop filter, you shouldn't really be putting your eye up to the optical viewfinder because it can damage your retina and it will strain your eye. Even if you think you have a good filter, I still wouldn't recommend that. Let the camera take the brunt of that and it's, it's not going to hurt your camera either as long as you have the right filter. Now, with a mirrorless, you really don't have to worry about it too much because you're going to look at a electronic viewfinder, you'll be fine on that. And uh, the sun goes through a 10 year cycle period. Right now we're leaving solar minimum and going towards solar maximum and you're also going to start seeing more and more sunspots on the surface. So here in a second, I'll switch the camera over Okay, so here we are trying to find the sun. It's pretty easy. It's literally going to be the only thing that uh, is even visible. So here we go. There's the sun. So this is looking at it at equal to 150 millimeters. And we're going to slowly zoom in to 600. Okay, so here we are at 600 millimeters. Now if I stop moving the camera, the sun will slowly go across because it's going so fast. Well, the Earth's going so fast around the sun. So you constantly have to make minor little improvements. So this is the 600 millimeter equivalent. Now here in a second, I'm going to change the camera to DX mode and we're going to look at 900 millimeter example so that we know what it's going to look like if you're on a crop body using this lens. Okay so here we are at 600 millimeters so you can see what the uh, composition looks like. If we can't dial in the focus and the exposure see if we can see some some details on the surface of the sun and honestly it kind of appears as if there is no no uh, no sunspots today which is kind of a bummer but I do have some other examples to put in here of sunspots from other times that I've done this but as you can tell 900 millimeters kind of fills the frame a little bit and you can also when you're taking photos crop in after you take the shot just for quick reference for your photos i'm about iso 64 to iso 100 f63 one four hundredths of a second so honestly if you really wanted to and you were using the back screen on a dslr 
or the EVF on a mirrorless, you could you could shoot this handheld pretty easily. It's nothing too crazy. So if you have any questions, comments, any thoughts, anything you'd like to ask, post down below in the description. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And it's plus it's, it's kind of fun to bounce ideas off each other when it comes to this stuff. So as I asked earlier in the video, like, subscribe, all that good jazz, and happy shooting. Please don't go blind.